Here's everything you might have missed in the She-Hulk trailer. The number one lawyer in the Marvel Universe is coming to the MCU. And no, I'm not talking about a rumored Daredevil reboot. I'm talking about She-Hulk. Last week during Disney Plus Day's cavalcade of announcements, Marvel Studios revealed the first look at their highly anticipated She-Hulk series dropping in 2022. Starring Orphan Black's Tatiana Maslany as Jennifer Walters, the eponymous She-Hulk, this series was first announced during 2019's D23 Expo. And in case the logo wasn't enough of a clue, the series looks like it's going to sprinkle in elements of legal dramedies of yesteryear like Ally McBeal, alongside its spandex-clad superhero action, all while taking place in Los Angeles, if that logo's skyline is to be believed. And although the first look at She-Hulk was brief, it included some unexpected reveals, an exciting cameo, and one of the best Easter eggs in the MCU to date. We're gonna break it all down for you in just a moment, but if for some reason you're worried about spoilers, leave now before you get angry. We wouldn't like you when you're angry. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? Now, in case you've been living under a rock, She-Hulk is the superheroic alter ego of Jennifer Walters. Created by Stan Lee and John Busama, she first appeared in 1980's The Savage She-Hulk No. 1. A gifted attorney and Bruce Banner's cousin, she wasn't born with the power to transform into this mean green fighting machine. Rather, after getting shot by armed goons connected to a case she was working on, Jen was left in critical condition. And Bruce Banner saved her life with an emergency blood transfusion, but... His gamma irradiated blood had the unexpected side effect of giving Jen similarly rage-based powers. Now, unlike her cousin, in the comics at least, Jen has a much easier time reaching an equilibrium between her Jennifer Walters persona and her She-Hulk persona. She manages to maintain a level of control that we see Professor Hulk exerting in the MCU. I know, it's crazy. I'm wearing shirts now. And as we'll see in the She-Hulk series, she goes on to become one of the most talented and high-profile attorneys in the Marvel Universe. Over the years, she's been a member of the Fantastic Four, the Avengers, and even found herself on the wrong side of the law when the Time Variant Authority arrested her for trying to save Hawkeye's life by altering the past. So could that mean a Loki and She-Hulk crossover? Maybe she'll whip him around like a rag doll, just like her cousin did as well? Puny God. Now with all of that said, let's return to the present and look to the future. The She-Hulk teaser opens with Jennifer Walters doing yoga in her sun-dappled apartment. Yoga? It's probably pretty important for someone whose anger issues can turn her into a monster that no Snickers bar can fix to practice mindfulness and stay centered. Because unlike Fastos, she can't afford to keep smashing through fall collection Ikea furniture. She needs Vibranium or West Elm at the bare minimum. In the next shot, we see Jen walking past an office building, presumably on her way to court. Her dark suit and purple shirt also echoes the outfit we saw Bruce Banner wearing when we first met Mark Ruffalo's version back in Avengers. Except, as we'll see, She-Hulk tends to wear more of a tasteful unitard as compared to Hulk's quantum pants that defy the laws of stretch denim. So, who knows, maybe WandaVision's aerospace engineer designed those as well, but only time will tell. I never wear cutoffs. How do I keep waking up in cutoffs? Normal pants going in. Cutoffs coming out. You. And speaking of She-Hulk, our first glimpse of her in Hulk form reveals a costume that riffs on her most iconic outfit from the comics. It incorporates the white and purple from that outfit, but adds some tactical black material to in a way that feels very in line with what we've seen from the MCU's design sensibilities thus far. She even has matching sneakers, which is just such a nice touch. It also evokes the costume we saw Professor Hulk wearing in Endgame, so I'm guessing that Bruce Banner helped design this based on what we see here. And although she is leaner than Hulk, that doesn't mean she's a pushover, because according to the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, she can lift at least 75 tons and has a 600-foot vertical leap. In the next scene, we see Professor Hulk running some tests inside the Gamma Lab that he mentioned during the diner scene in Avengers Endgame. 18 months in the Gamma Lab. I put the brains and the brawn together. Bruce has Jen inside some sort of elaborate chamber that presumably can withstand gamma radiation and Hulk's strength. She's hooked up to this Cerebro-esque helmet that's providing real-time biostatistics on the monitor behind him. Bruce tells Jen that these transformations are caused by anger and fear, meaning that she's still likely trying to get a handle on why she morphs into a green-skinned rage monster. And much like Bruce Banner went from being always angry in Avengers to being a chill taco angel in Endgame, controlling that rage within is going to be crucial. So perhaps this is shortly after the blood transfusion, or maybe she's dealing with a really stressful case. Either way, this appears to be early on in Jen's journey as She-Hulk. The real question, though, revolves around Hulk's arm. 
Now, after using the Infinity Gauntlet to reverse the blip in Avengers Endgame, it left his arm pretty badly damaged, even in his Hulk form. Now, spoiler alert if you haven't seen Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings yet, but that damaged limb is something that carried over into Bruce Banner's human form as we saw in the post credit scene of that film. In both the ending of Avengers Endgame and Shang-Chi, Bruce Banner's arm is in a sling, but here it's back to normal. So unless Bruce reverted back to his Hulk form to heal faster or he's had some sort of breakthrough in physical therapy, the likeliest answer here is that this particular scene is a flashback, taking place in that five-year period between Infinity War and Endgame. Now we have further clues in the form of a deep cut homage to the 1978 Incredible Hulk television series. Jen and Bruce are dressed in their 1970s finest, filming what I imagine is a commercial for Jen's law practice. Bruce, with distinctly undamaged arms, is dressed exactly as Bill Bixby was in the Incredible Hulk series when he uttered his famous line, Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Here though, Jen delivers it directly to camera, breaking the fourth wall in a very different way than WandaVision did. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Now, later in the Marvel Studios Disney Plus Day teaser, we see another shot of She-Hulk in a silver gown stepping out of a limousine onto a red carpet. Maybe she's going to the premiere of one of Kingo's movies, Shadow Warrior 3? Only time will tell. As for what we do know about the series, it will bring back Tim Roth as Abomination, who first appeared in 2008's Incredible Hulk with Ed Norton, and more recently in Shang-Chi, where he was fighting in a top-secret fight club in Macau against Wong. And as we learned in that movie, Wong and Abomination were fixing fights to split the profits, leading us to wonder if he's still as bad of a guy as he used to be in his MCU debut. So if both Bruce Banner and Emil Blonsky can find a degree of lucidity and tranquility despite being towering murder monsters, clearly there's hope for Jennifer Walters as well. And Abomination isn't the only MCU villain appearing in this series. The Good Place star Jamila Jamil will portray She-Hulk's arch nemesis Titania, also known as Mary McFerrin. First appearing in 1984's Marvel superhero Secret Wars No. 3, Mary was constantly bullied in her youth, and when she suddenly found her hometown of a Colorado suburb ripped from the planet Earth by the Beyonder to become Battleworld, her life was forever changed. After encountering Doctor Doom, he recruited her and offered her superpowers in exchange for servitude. Using alien technology, she gained super strength and a lot of newfound confidence, but unfortunately when she battled She-Hulk, she learned that maybe she wasn't strong enough, leading to a decades-long rivalry between them, which will come to a head in this series. An LA Times article cited a report that Titania will be a glamorous social media influencer, Kardashian-esque with a dark side, which basically sounds like Tahani from The Good Place, but with super strength. Now, with that said, it could also provide some valuable context for that red carpet scene from the trailer. As for other Marvel characters, well, there are rumors flying about everyone from Matt Murdock, which would make a lot of sense because he's a fellow lawyer, to Kingpin, to the leader, so it's anybody's guess as to what has a kernel of truth and what's simply the popcorn of lies, or whatever the opposite of a kernel of truth actually is. Regardless, we'll keep you up to date as we learn more. Anyway, folks, there you have it. That is everything we spotted in the She-Hulk First Look teaser trailer. We are incredibly excited to see what exactly Tatiana Maslany can do with this character and what Marvel can do with a legal comedy. In the meantime, though, if you want to learn more about the She-Hulk series and Titania's comic book history, we've got you covered over on Nerdist.com. For now, though, tell us what did you think of this first look at She-Hulk? When do you think this series takes place and what do you hope to see from the show itself? Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like and share this video with your friends. Hulk smash that notification bell so you never miss a new video. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.